In the move from page to screen, some pieces of the puzzle just don't make it. <laughs> Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 differences between the Maze Runner books and movies. Before we begin, we publish new content every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at plot points and characters that were changed for the screen adaptations of the first two installments, The Maze Runner and Maze Runner The Scorch Trials. So if you haven't read or seen those, this is your spoiler alert. Number 10. Ava Page Actually Appears in the Movies Hello. My name is Dr. Ava Page. Chancellor Ava Page, the head of research organization Wicked, or WCKD, is the ruthless mastermind behind events in both The Maze Runner and The Scorch Trials. But in the book, she never actually appears directly, speaking instead through emailed memoranda in the epilogues. This would have been tough to pull off on screen, and so the movies bring Ava and audiences face to face. Thomas, it's okay. When the Gladers escape the maze, she's there to provide much needed backstory. And despite appearing to die, Still there pulling all the strings in the sequel. Start loading the mess, ma'am. Okay, you heard. Number nine, more Teresa. It's a girl. What? No way. I think she's dead. Love her or hate her, Teresa is the yin to Thomas's yang. But she isn't actually around a whole lot in the books. She spends half of the first book in a coma and disappears for most of the second turning up again as the leader of a different group. The adaptations, on the other hand, see her quickly back on her feet inside the maze, and have her remain with the Gladers through the Scorch. As a result, we get much more Teresa time, even if that mostly means standing around in the background and just kind of looking at things. Don't let me turn into one of those things. Number 8. The Cranks Are Just Zombies Thomas, watch out! Get back, get back, get back. Grievers and Lightning and Zombies, oh my! Lions and tigers and bears, oh my! In a series that combines so many different genre elements, with fantastic beasts, brain implants, and a dystopian post-apocalyptic setting, maybe it's no surprise to find zombies thrown in for good measure. In the books, however, Cranks are infected humans that only gradually slide into insanity. The movies opt for a simpler approach, portraying cranks as straight-up zombies, essentially. They're scary, but also in a sense somehow less unsettling than the cranks in the books, who have to watch their identities unravel as animal instincts take over. Number 7. Teresa's Betrayal I'm saying I want you to understand. I understand what? How do you defeat a deadly virus? Well, if you're wicked, you build a vast maze underground and fill it with bloodthirsty biomechanical horrors, then force the survivors to traverse a lightning-blasted wasteland. Because that's science, right? Everything that's happened to you, everything we've done to you, it was all done for a reason. In the novels, this takes an even more twisted turn when Wicked blackmails Teresa into making out with another guy in front of Thomas, then pretending to murder him. Wicked is good. Um, Wicked is good how? We're spared this in the movie, but Teresa still betrays Thomas and the Gladers, giving Wicked their location in the hope Wicked's experiments can save the world. Please don't fight them, Thomas. Number 6. The Whole Last Battle in the Scorch Trials Once Thomas crosses the Scorch in the book, he and the survivors face a final challenge an onslaught of faceless yellow bulb monsters covered in nasty silver blades. They're picked up by Wicked and whisked off to another facility, coming more or less full circle. The movie takes a completely different route, showing them meet up with the resistance group The Right Arm, who only appear later in the trilogy, for an explosive battle with Wicked. That ends with Thomas still free and at large plotting his next move. But I know what I'm supposed to do now. Number 5. The Griever Massacre They're here. Sure, living inside a giant maze isn't ideal, 
But the Glade is actually kinda nice. It's green, everyone has one defining occupation, and there's bromance aplenty. Oh, and one girl, added to the colony later. Hey, that actually sounds suspiciously like the Smurfs. Hello, boy! Hello, Smurfette! That all changes when one night the maze doors remain open and the Grievers attack. In the book, the monstrosities only take one child at a time. But in the movie, it's a massacre, with the Grievers attacking all at once. It's less suspenseful overall, but a more dramatic moment to see on screen. Let's go! <laughs> Number 4. Thomas and Teresa Aren't Telepathic Hey, look, we just want to talk! When it comes to Thomas and Teresa, well, it's complicated. It's a classic case of will they, won't they? Will she bash his head in with a rock? Or will she stab him in the face? Hey, whoa, it's Thomas! It's Thomas! In the books, there's a whole other side to this relationship. Because Thomas and Teresa can also communicate telepathically, courtesy of chips implanted by Wicked. On one hand, it makes their bond more intimate. On the other, it also doesn't really change the plot a whole lot. So it's not a huge surprise that in the film adaptations, the whole telepathy thing is sidestepped. No. It can't be true. Number 3. The Gladers Aren't Infected The elements don't kill you, the cranks will. Nobody wants to be a zombie. It makes you very cranky. And that's what happens when you get the flare. In the books, the Gladers are told that they're infected, and on their way to devolving into abominations. Game over. That's one diagnosis you don't want to hear. And how did they get that diagnosis? Well, blame the Rat Man. Wicked's assistant director, Jansen. Open this door, Jansen! You really don't want me to. He informs the Gladers that if they didn't get cured within two weeks, they'd get cranked. But in the movies, the Gladers aren't infected at all. That plot point isn't used, which leads us to our next difference. <laughs> Number 2. The Scorch Isn't the Next Trial Soon you'll all be moving on to greener pastures. In the book, Jansen tells the Gladers that they must enter the Scorch, a trial testing the Gladers' endurance, stamina, and sanity. They are driven into the desolate Scorch, essentially a new kind of maze designed to put them under extreme stress. And they're convinced it will ultimately lead to their reaching safety and being healed. But in the movie, the Gladers just bust out of Jansen's facility and go to the Scorch to escape Wicked, with no infection threat driving them. This changes the context of the story that follows. It's still dramatic and exciting, but doesn't have the subtext. Number 1. The Maze is a Different Puzzle We gotta go! Run, Thomas! We gotta get trapped! The Maze is really a giant puzzle, and that's what makes Maze Runners so important. The runners map the maze so the Gladers can put together all the pieces. In the novel, Thomas figures out that when maps from different sections are laid on top of each other, they spell out a single letter. Over time, these letters form words that provide clues to finding the exit. This puzzle was simplified for the movie, where the regular movements of the maze's numbered sections instead provide a numerical code. It's a mechanical device looted from a dead griever that leads them to the exit, where the code opens the final door. Thomas! Oh! Eight numbers! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day!